Yo, what is going on guys? So due to a request for me to make a Zoro guide and uh, seeing as there is some demand for it, I think I'll give it a shot. I'm going to make a Zoro guide for beginners. So in this guide is going to be very simple. I will be showing you all the ways pretty much on how you would normally get to Zora and the setups for Zora and all of the uh, rotations for Zora and how to tackle each one of the rotations. And towards the end of the video, I'll probably give some extra tips for uh, people that are willing to, you know, try to kill Zora a bit more efficiently. And anyways, enjoy today's guide and hopefully you'll find this guide to be helpful. So the bare minimums to even get to Zora uh, is to do Regicide Quest. All right, you have to complete that quest or else you really can't, uh, you know, do Zora. So once you finish that uh, quest, you will be able to travel to Zora. The most simple way to get to Zora is through the use of charter ships. Now, I recommend actually uh, using the Ectovile method, but this method involves you going to the charter ship in Port Fast. You will be able to take the charter ship all the way to the Port Tyrus, and that is where Zora is basically located, just south of this place. And you walk south a bit, and then this is the dock to Zora. So another area that you can travel to to get to Zora uh, relatively quickly is through either the Camelot teleport to the Cadaby dogs or the Cadaby teleport using the Lunar spell. And it's the same deal, bring some cash. It costs like uh, I think a 2000 or so. Uh, this one is 1600 so I guess just bring like 50k or something and you don't have to worry about it for many trips. So the most basic way to get to Zolandra is to buy yourself some Solandra teleports and use it to get to the dock but I don't recommend it because as you can see right here it costs 42,000 each and it's a one-time use so one click of this and there goes 42,000 GP right there so if you use this it will cut your profits quite a bit so I, I don't recommend it but yeah I guess if you're rich use it and the method that I use the most and my favorite method of them all is to use the fairy rings to get to Zora, but however, this requires quite a bit of uh, skills and quests. So obviously you need to do the quest to even access the fairy rings. And uh, basically with the fairy rings, I recommend using the quest cape, but obviously this is high level requirement. So most of you guys probably will know how to do Zora by then. But anyways, the idea is you want to get to the fairy ring and uh, you can do that using the slayer ring, quest cape, it uh, doesn't matter whichever you prefer and you go to Solandra so this will teleport you to an island that is basically right next to the dock however this method requires 76 agility or 71 agility if you use like a summer buy so I guess the bare minimum would be 71 agility and uh, this is very cheap and very fast to get to obviously the fastest method besides the Solandra teleport but high requirements so so it's time to talk about the setup and the stats required to actually kill the snake. So first things first, the most important stat I would say for Zora that you must uh, at least hit is 75 magic, okay? Zora, you will be maging that boss most of the time. So having 75 magic is super crucial. So you can use the trap disease, all right? Super, super important. So if you don't have 75 magic, you should probably get 75 magic first before you even try to do Zora. And as for range, I say at least 70 range. That way you can use Black Dehyde and any of the God uh, Dehyde equivalents. And as for prayer, the bare minimum would be 40 prayer. So that way you can at least use Protect from Range and Protect from Magic. Those two prayers are absolutely essential for the boss fight. And as for defense, I recommend at least 40 defense so that you can wear the Black Dehyde body. So let's talk about the equipment, shall we? So this is a relatively cheap equipment. I'll talk more about the uh, helmet thing later. But Trident of the Seas is probably going to be your most expensive item that you'll be using for Zora. But it's super crucial, so definitely have that. And as for the mage armor, you really only need mystics. I don't have a mystic top, so whatever. I just use enchanted top. But all these are basically 100k or less, so very cheap. And as for the boots, you can get away with really any boots. I recommend at least mystic boots though. And as for a cape, I would say stick with Ava's accumulator because you're going to be ranging. As for gloves, just wear your best gloves. 
And as for the shield slot, it's not too important, but if you have like a god book, you should definitely bring it. It doesn't matter if it's felt or not, because the plus 5 prayer bonus is going to help during the fight. So for the necklace slot, just use a glory. If you don't have a glory, just use a power amulet, but if you have like a fury, obviously use that <laughs> instead. So for the helmet slot, if you have 75 defense, then you can uh, use the serpentine helmet as Zora. So what I'm wearing is a serpentine helmet, it's just recolored with a different name. So wearing this will prevent you from getting poisoned at Zora. But you don't really need that if you are a normal player, you can just buy yourself this potion called the Anti-Venom Plus. And basically drinking a dose of it will give you 5 minutes immunity from Zora. So if you don't have 75 defense or you don't feel like using a serpentine helmet, you can just use the Anti-Venom Plus. So that's just preference up to you. So if you're not using the Serpentine Helmet, just use something like a Farseer Helmet or an Aram Suit. Anything that gives you magic accuracy is good enough. And for the ring slot, you should be wearing a ring of recoil, okay? You should have one in inventory and one uh, worn. Because that's going to be super essential for the fight. I'll explain it actually during the fight. So let's move on to the inventory slot. So you want to have your range items with you. I'd say at least the top and bottom is good enough. You don't really need excessive range gear. And as for the ranged weapon, Rune Crossbow uh, minimum, okay? Really recommend that Rune Crossbow with Broad Bolts. If you don't have access to Broad Bolts, I guess Adamant Bolts will work. I have two Prayer Potions. Depending on how slow you kill it, you might need two. But typically, one is uh, enough for one kill. And the food is pretty straightforward. I have a few uh, Quan Bonds, and the remainder is Sharks. So the Quan Bonds, they're used as combo food. So I'll show you how this works. So you can actually eat something with the Quan Bond at the same tick if you do it right. So it's always the food other than the Quan Bond first and then the Quan Bond. So it's like this. Sometimes Zora hits like 40 plus. So it's nice to be able to eat like a shark or a monkfish and a Quan Bond at the same time for like a 30 to 40 HP heal, which will you know mitigate your chance of dying. You also want to bring a Ring of Dueling. This is used for after you get a Zora kill or Zora kills. So before you bank, you teleport to Clan Wars and you head over to the Free For All portal. Just go in there and refresh your stats so you don't have to use your prayer pots or food to heal up. It's now time to talk about the boss fight. Zoro is a pretty unique and challenging boss because it seems like Zoro is never the same every time you fight him. Unless you learn the four rotations. So actually, there are only four rotations that you have to memorize. So once you memorize these four rotations and you learn to identify which rotation you're fighting, then Zoro becomes pretty easy because he will become predictable and you'll know exactly what his next move will be. So the image you see now shows all four rotations for Zora and how it starts and ends for each one. So I'm going to explain to you what these diagrams mean. So I will use rotation one as an example. So the green dot represents the range Zora typically it ranges you. The red dot is melee Zora typically it melees only. And the blue dot means the melee Zora typically it mages but it also ranges quite often as well. And this little pink dot you see here is where you should be standing on this landmass. So this white end is the landmass that you'll be moving around fighting against Zora, okay? And where the big dots are relative to this landmass is where Zora is going to be spawning. So for every single kill, it's always going to start off with center range Zora. And you're always going to be fighting him at this part in the beginning, okay? So I am talking about rotation 1. So let's just say that it is rotation 1. You figured it out. So that means when this green Zora submerges, that means it's going to move on to the next step. And then he's going to emerge at the center once again with melee phase. And you're going to still be fighting him in the same area. So once the melee one submerges, that means it begins the next part. And that's going to be the blue Zora. He's going to emerge in the middle as well. Except this time, instead of fighting here, you move over to this side. And you're going to be fighting him here. And then once the blue one submerges, the green Zora, the range Zora is going to pop up at the northern part and you're going to be fighting them here, etc, etc. So every time Zora submerges, that means it moves on to the next step. So what if you don't kill Zora by the end of, say, rotation 1? Well, nothing really. It just basically starts over in any of these four rotations and whatever damage you dealt to it will stay there. It's not going to reset HP or anything. So basically, you have to figure out again what rotation it's going to use. So I highly recommend you have this image next to your runescape screen so that when you're fighting Zora for the first few times, you'll be able to quickly figure out which rotation you're on. So a quick way to identify which rotation you're on is 
at the very beginning right here okay so as soon as the range source submerges let's say if it pops up red that means you are automatically locked between these two rotations okay it can never be rotation three or four all right until the very end and it resets so once you see red pop up right after green and it's gonna almost be the same throughout this whole fight between one and two except for right here okay so this is where you start to figure out which one it is between one and two so once the blue submerges if zora spawns on the northern side right here that means it's rotation one and if blue submerges and the green zora spawns on the right hand side that means it's rotation two and as for rotation three and four they are just kind of different so for rotation three if the green one that starts off submerges and the green one spawns that means you're on rotation three all right and for rotation four if green submerges and blue emerges that means it's rotation four so this is at the very beginning you'll figure out very quickly so now let's get on to the real fight so i'm going to be showing you the fights for each of the different rotations and quickly explaining the important points that you need to uh, watch out for so this is rotation one that means the melee guy is going to be popping out right after this so we just want to be maging as usual in the very beginning get as many hits as possible and uh, you want to make sure you are standing where i am so you can avoid the poison so the only thing you have to worry about the melee guy is you have to make sure you are positioned away from the tail so if it's facing like that you want to make sure you go on the opposite side so the major uh, you just want to make sure you attack it and pray mage accordingly so the timing of your praise are important you want to make sure you protect from prayer for the next one as soon as the one previously submerged because that way you won't get hit so the only time you really get hit is by the snakelings and by the mage so when it does its range attack so that's why you still need your food and whatnot but yeah you want to stand by this pillar so this pillar is really crucial here because that way you can avoid the poison for this phase for this rotation and also the melee guy cannot hit you if you stand by the pillar so it works on both sides you can do that for the other side as well so the melee guy just can't touch you at all so you can just <laughs> chill out here and get some free mage hits and then the mage guy is going to be spawning right after that so make sure you have your prayers on so i recommend you set your quick prayers to protect from mage and eco eye so that way you can switch between your prayers relatively quickly and this one is going to be the range guy except this time he does not attack so you don't have to worry about it but you should just prep your prey mage anyways because mage so is going to be popping out as soon as this guy is done summoning his babies and also keep an eye out on your ring of weak wall though so hopefully you'll see the message when it says it breaks so put that on asap so mage phase you have to be super careful especially during this part because he does quite a bit of hits he honestly i feel like he does range hits like 50 percent of the time so just have your food you know your combo food ready with Quanbon. if you get hit like a 40 you know just eat that shark and Quanbon asap and this is the jab phase so i killed this jab phase a little bit too fast so i'll show you like a clip where i don't kill it so fast so i can explain exactly how it all works out so rotation two is pretty much almost the same as rotation one except it starts becoming only a little bit different after the first mage guy submerges so for rotation two the green zora spawns on the right hand side as you can see and he doesn't attack this time he only sprays whereas on rotation one he sprays towards the end but yeah this time he sprays extra early so at this point i actually recommend having protect for mage on like the whole time you're gonna have two more following phases where protecting from mage is going to be really helpful first of all to protect from the mage zora's attacks and for some reason for rotation one and two for this particular part the minions have a hard time hitting through your mage bird they, like, they can still damage you but with the mage pro on they have a hard time hitting as you can see i'm just tanking so many of them and that's really good because you're gonna have to tank these guys or you would like to tank these guys because you're also going to be maging the melee guy at this same spot and most likely you'll still have a few minions attacking you but at least you don't get hit by those when you have protect from mage on so once that's done the ranger is going to show up oh i fucked up my prayer switch i haven't done this in a while but anyways you just want to protect from range and kill it with magic but he submerges relatively fast as well so as you can see yeah it goes by really quickly so you want to make sure you're ready to protect for mage and eagle eye for the mage guy because 
This is one of the longest parts of the rotation 2 and same for rotation 1 because he attacks you for a bit and he also starts spawning babies. And you have to get ready now though because very soon he's going to get into the jab phase so I recommend you heal up and put on your mage gear. Protect from range to start. Okay, so I'm going to be slow mowing this part. Essentially, for rotation 1 and 2, jab phase starts off with protect from range because he's going to attack you with range first. And the trick to uh, protecting correctly is to look at his animation. So whenever you see him close his wings to his face, that means you have to switch to the next prayer to stop his next attack. Because if you pray after you see the animation, it's too late, he already hits you. So when you are starting jab phase for rotation 1 and 2, make sure you have protect from range on first. And the moment you see range, you better protect from mage because if you protect from range when you see the range hit, it's already too late. Okay, the protection prayer doesn't work like that. It has to be before it does the animation. So if you see mage animation, protect from range. And he's gonna alternate between mage and range for I'd say like four to five hits, okay? So just make sure you get that rhythm right because that's probably gonna make or break your Zora kill. So if you manage to survive the jab phase, then go to the spot where I am, go hug the bottom, uh, area of the right side and that way the poison can get to you so the melee is going to be there for a bit you can get like i'd say uh, three or four hits in there so you want to make sure you dodge but you have to go to the poison but it's okay it's worth it because you got extra hits there and he's going to submerge and protect from range and that is the end of rotation two and also for rotation one as well so yeah you can get so many free hits over here usually you probably will kill zora by this point but yeah, sometimes you might not, and that means it would start another phase, and then you have to figure out which phase that is. So at this point, I have to figure out what phase it is. Okay, the red guy popped up, so that means it's either rotation 1 or 2. So even if you don't manage to kill Zora within the first rotation, you'll be fine, because once you figure out the rotation of this one, it's the same deal. So after showing you rotation 1 and 2 pretty thoroughly, I pretty much give you all the tricks that you really need to do Zora efficiently for all four rotations. The only real difference is that during the rotation 3 and 4, the jab phase orientation is a bit different. Instead of happening from the right, it starts from the left. And instead of range first, it's mage first, and then you alternate between mage and range from that. So other than that, once you memorize the rotations, all you gotta do is make sure to have your recoil on if it is shattered. Make sure to have the right prayers on for the upcoming uh, next phase. So if you know Green Zora emerges and you know that Mage is coming up, make sure you protect for Mage and Eagle Eye, and you know get your range equipped ready. So the gist of it is memorize the rotations and get good at the switches, and then you'll be fine after that. So I'll be showing you rotation three and four full fight as well. And I've already explained all the tactics on how to do Zoro in general, so you'll be able to understand how I went about doing this as well. So just watch it and hopefully you will memorize the rotations uh, soon enough with enough practice.
that is basically it for the beginner's guide but if you're interested in learning about uh, some things that you could do to you know make your Zora kills even more efficiently then stick around for some uh, more tips I suppose so what you saw me killing Zora with is obviously not what I usually kill Zora with but starting out that's what I uh, started doing Zora with but there's a lot of things that you can do to improve your Zora kills and uh, some things are basically more damage percent gear so for magic, you want to have something like an occult necklace. If you got money, you can get a tormented bracelet as well. But the occult necklace is the big one, the 10% extra magic damage. And also you want to upgrade from the trident of the seas to the trident of the swamp. The swamp is a plus three extra damage. So that's a pretty big deal. And if you have magic potions, you can use that as well. That also boosts your trident damage by quite a bit. If you have imbue hard, then replace the magic potion. And also ancestral armor is something that you can wear as well they give a plus two percent damage for each piece there's three pieces on this iron man i have one so that's an extra uh, two percent damage right there as for range you definitely want to upgrade to a toxic blow pipe that's basically the best range weapon you got against aura and if you have money the necklace of anguish is always there as well five percent extra range damage so that is something you want to use for a range switch and obviously you want to upgrade from the dehyde if you have armor build that's even better if you have void range at higher levels void range can tend to be uh, better than armor build so yeah you might want to consider that as well for your range switch and of course you want to bring your potions as well defense pods range pods uh, magic potions if you got those and the rune pouch is also pretty helpful here guys you can uh, either put in your home teleport runes if you have like a pool, I'll show you right now, I have like the pool in my house that I can use to restore my stats so I don't even have to go to Clan Wars. Or you can also go on Lunars and uh, put in something like Vengeance. Vengeance is pretty nice for the Mage Phase Zora because obviously his sneaky range attacks, you know, can be actually used against him if you have Vengeance. You can time it well, you know, you can fetch back like an extra 30 on him or something. Dang, this was a 20 minute plus video, GG. I try my best to keep it as succinct as possible and yeah, that's as good as it gets. So if you need to refer to this video again, just use the timestamps in the beginning of the video to find the sections that you need. And anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. So Zora is not the easiest boss and it takes a lot of effort for a lot of players, especially if you haven't done much BVM. So you have to practice a lot and be patient. And if you keep trying, you will definitely master it at some point and it will be so rewarding. So good luck to everybody learning Zora right now and hopefully you get some nice drops. And I'll see you guys later with another video in a few days maybe. Take care and bye bye.